um, whilst transport was being provided for, mm -hmm. they didn't limit also the fact that if someone could afford their own transport, this person can go. Okay. Like if you're if you think you can get transport and go there as fast as possible, please, you can. So me and my friend, we got a taxi, and uh, the taxi could only reach us uh, up to a certain extent. And when we reached there, we had to um, walk with our bags for 20 kilometers. And uh, since we had, we also had girls, and I, there was one girl who had a big bag, a very big bag. As, as, as she should. A very big bag. I don't know why, why yeah. girls are like this. <laughs> I was like, yeah. why are you taking all these things? Like, really? In the midst yeah. of a war? And I had to, I had a hand luggage, so yeah. I had to help out. Mm -hmm. And once I got that bag, for me, I was determined that, okay, um, since I have this bag, I have the way. I think I should first go and see what's happening that side so that I'll have communication with my friends. If there's anything, I can call them and tell them, oh, guys, the situation is like this, the situation is like this. Because as we are going along the way, some people were coming back. Yeah. Some people were coming back saying, guys, go back. You will not cross. It's not possible. The situation is so bad. There's so many people, mm -hmm. and they are prioritizing women and children. Like, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So as we saw that, some people were discouraged, other, national, uh, other nationals. But for us as Zambians, knowing that uh, we had a government which was um, there for us, coordinating with us, uh, I think we were determined that we will make it. So I had to go. I, um, I reached the border post. I left, um, we were dropped off somewhere around 17, and I reached the border post somewhere around 19. Mm -hmm. And my friends later arrived. They found me, I was already there at the border, um, somewhere around 21, somewhere there. Yeah. So were you all communicating um, with each other, you know, regardless of who was at which border? How, how did you manage to at least just be in touch with, with everyone as students from Zambia? We were all um, communicating. I myself, uh, after being the first person to cross over the border, uh, I, assist, I was uh, coordinating with the Zambian Embassy and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, to ensure that there's a smooth transition of uh, students from uh, um, Poland to Zambia, from, right from the Polish border. Like once they enter the Polish border, we were there to um, receive them and the, the embassy was there to receive them as well. Did you get in touch with the, um, are you the one that made contact or did the Zambian government make contact first? They had already made contact a long time ago. We actually mm -hmm. had a meeting. Okay. We had a meeting with, uh, with the staff from uh, Russia, uh, Moscow to be particular. And uh, we, there were plans for the evacuation, mm -hmm. and uh, we were working according to this plan. And the moment I reached the, uh, the Polish border, our consular was already there uh, waiting for us. It was very, very helpful okay. uh, together with the DA, uh, together with uh, also um, the acting ambassador, uh, Mrs. Chileshe and also the secretary of uh, um, the consular's office as well, she was there, and other um, uh, embassy staff who were very, very helpful in coordination with us. Stanley, I want to know this from you. Were you afraid um, or did the thought of dying in a foreign country cross your mind? No, no, no. I, <clears throat> I wasn't afraid of dying at any point. Okay. But I, I simply wanted to leave as soon as possible because I felt... Uh, my parents were not in a good place. Uh, so the only thing that kept me going was the fact that I needed to, to leave the place as soon as possible so that everyone should continue with their lives uh, as they do always. <clears throat> that was very thoughtful um, <laughs> of you, you know, using your parents to be that shield um, to keep you going. But you, you had mentioned, um, you know, they were just allowing, first of all, women and children to go. And with you, you, you know, they let the, the, the women first go and you remain behind. Even in that moment, you didn't think that maybe you could be stuck at that border for even maybe a, a, another few, two, three more weeks um, before you could actually cross over successfully? Initially, I was thinking, after the girl had left, I was thinking I was going to cross over within the next few hours. 
but the, the hours kept on increasing. It was after two hours, it, it went to five hours, to eight hours. And the eight hours turned to 48 hours. So I, I wasn't afraid of not crossing and remaining behind because I knew we had other options. Um, I think the, hard part, the hardest part of the entire journey wasn't actually the walk, but the patience at the border post. I think that was the toughest thing to do there. Wow. The wait. What made it tough? Was it also just the background noise of, you know, the weapons or it was just the stress of just trying to get out? Well, <laughs> the, we didn't really have, like, guns. In at, that area? Yeah, in that area. Okay. So the only thing that would overwhelm you is the number of people, like the traffic behind. You see people coming in numbers mm -hmm. and that would make you nervous that what, these people are running away from something really bad. So that too was a motivating factor to live. Yeah, I wasn't afraid of, of dying at any point. I love that you guys were ready to <laughs> die in a foreign country. Like, I, 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 no, 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 no. We are not I, ready to die. We are not ready to die. It but seems like no, you're no, ready we are not to ready die to die. At but, some point. No, like, we are not ready to die, but um, I think the thought of dying didn't cross up my oh mind my personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, was a, I, never thought of, I never thought it could happen. Really, like yeah. knowing that... Um, you have an ambassador and uh, a detached general mm -hmm. and a consular and other embassy staff waiting for you right at the border. I, for me, I was just determined that I have to cross. I have to use every um, way possible. Mm -hmm. I have to um, be smart. I have to be uh, tactical. I have to be obedient. I have to follow what I'm told to do uh, to make sure that I'm, I reach to the safe side. Wow. Um, I, I remember through the, the news clip you did mention that you would like to go back. Are you really looking to go back yes. or are you going to pick another Definitely. European country to go to? Definitely. Def if, if, like, if today things are stabilized, mm -hmm. we'll be more than happy to go back. Why? Because I think, uh, for me personally, uh, I've been in Ukraine for five years. Mm -hmm. And um, at first when I went to Ukraine, I did preparatory course, which is a language course. And after that, I've been doing, I've done four years of pharmacy mm -hmm. and I'm just remaining with one year. So I can't just waste all these years and just throw them away. So I need to complete what I started. And I think uh, I also have other plans as well, which I need to fulfill. And I'm determined that I will fulfill these plans. And for you, Stan? Well, five, five years of your life in a place you get adapted, you adapt the place. So you attach now to Ukraine, yeah? Yeah, to some extent. But then there's also the factor of uh, the academics part, where I'm remaining with only one year. So moving to a different place would only be inconveniencing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's, it would be in the best interest like for my education. Very quickly, I do understand that um, you also um, underwent some um, um, counseling. Is how um, is is there going to be more counselling as well as, as you are still here? Um, or is well, it, was that just some no, one off okay, counselling? No, okay. So the counselling was based on uh, the experiences that we had. Mm -hmm. So depending on like, different people react differently to yeah. different situations. So some people will need more sessions than others. So, yeah, uh, I am aware that some people were prescribed some days and things like that. So, okay. Yeah. So it's going to be like that. So there'll be more sessions for some people and not for everyone. So I gotta, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys are here and well done. You guys have been so brave. Um, I can only imagine what it must have been like out there and, and just the thoughts as well. But as we get into a break, I need um, who, who speaks, who's more fluent? He is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to tell me how do I cue in a break? So how do I say... Um, um, uh, there's still more to come on the Diamond Connection. Then catch us after this break. Or catch us after this break. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, catch us after this break. Yeah. That will be... Wait, if you said we'll meet again, if you want to say we will meet again, uh -huh. we'll say... Me budemo zustricha. Me budemo zustricha? Me, me, that's me. Uh -huh. Budemo. Budamo is will, uh -huh. Zustricha is meet. So will, will, will meet. We will meet. We'll okay, meet. Okay, so run, run me through it again. Run me through it again. Me, Budamo, Zustricha. Me, Budamo, 
Bill Streetcher. Bill Streetcher. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, y'all. I tried, but there's still more lessons coming um, in for me after the break. But keep watching the Diamond Connection. There's still more to come. <laughs>